Hi folks, I'm Matt Reinertz with Como Park Zoo and Conservatory and I'm standing in one of my favorite places in the world. It's the Sunken Garden. And over the years I've brought you many stories about the Sunken Garden and its flower shows. But within the Marge and McNeely Conservatory, there's another great garden and it's the North Garden. Well, we're gonna do a quick tour of that one and here to bring us on that tour is Margaret. Welcome to the North Garden. This is our economic plant room here at the conservatory. Today I want to show you a number of the plants that we have here in this room. And these plants, we call it the economic plant room because a number of the plants are used for food, for medicine, for building, all the things that you would normally use plants for. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start here on your right with one of our first plants, the vanilla orchid. Now, did you know that vanilla is an orchid? Vanilla is one of the few vines in the orchid family, and here at the conservatory we have a vine that is crawling all the way up to the roof. What makes it special today is that there's actually a flower. Now once that flower is pollinated, we would end up with vanilla pods. And these vanilla pods are what you would put in, if you wanted to do it at home, you could put these in your alcohol of any sort, let it sit, and that would be your vanilla. Most of the time people just buy vanilla, it's a much easier way to do it. But today it is special. We do have a vanilla flower, and that happens about once every couple months here at the conservatory. In the same area of the vanilla, we also have a banana. And banana is not a tree, it's actually an herb. It's one of the tallest herbs in the world. Ours right now has a wonderful flower on it. It's actually a plantain, and this is one of the cooking bananas. But most people will realize that edible bananas, the finger bananas, are ones that we're most familiar with. They're also called dessert bananas. Bananas also have a flower that can be eaten, and it can be cut up like celery and boiled, or the little tiny florets can be added to Thai food, in particular your spring roll. Bananas also have seeds. Now that's a wild banana. The bananas that we eat don't normally have big seeds like this, otherwise there'd be no reason for us to eat them. As you walk into the room on your left, you're going to see star fruit. Star fruit is one of the plants we have here at the conservatory. It's a nice yellow fruit, and when you cut it open, you have a five-pointed star. You'll see these a lot on dessert trays here in the United States. It's very sweet and crunchy and reminds me a lot of summer. Another popular plant in the North Garden on the right is the Calamon and Orange. And this one always has little tiny oranges on it all year long. Very fragrant flowers when it blooms, but it's a very popular plant as you walk in. It's up over your head and a nice little tree. Check it out. Look at the papaya trees above your head on the left. There's a whole number of papayas in this area on the left side of the room, different ages. All of these are from seed, and so there's always going to be a few in the room. Imagine a big ripe papaya growing out from the top of the papaya tree. And these would be the ones that we would eat in our salads. You can also use papaya seeds to grind up and have a wonderful spicy addition to your salad. Papin that comes from papaya is also used as a steak tenderizer and a meat tenderizer. And when I was in West Africa, we took the papaya leaves and wrapped them around tough meat or tough chicken, and it would actually soften the meat enough to be able to eat it. So papin comes out of papayas. One of the most noteworthy trees here at the conservatory is on the left. It's our ficus carica, or the fig tree. Now, we think that possibly this tree has been in here since the, the conservatory opened in 1915. It's been recently pollarded or cut back. And the reason we do that is that out takes away all the extra foliage and then we can have this plant grow and stay the same height in this room. It doesn't shade out everything else in the room. And figs, yes, figs are something that most of us would eat if you're eating cookies. And we have a nice little fig here that came, this is a, a fresh fig that would actually grow on a fig tree. Our fig does not have fruit normally. Now this is a very unusual plant for the conservatory. This is called kava, or kava kava. And this plant came by way of the Hawaiian Islands. This is a plant where the root is used by the local Polynesians, and it is a form of like a natural Prozac. It's a, it's a relaxant, but it's very unusual to see this plant out of Polynesia, and we're very lucky to have it. And again, this is kava. As I said before, there's so many plants in here that we don't have time to talk about all of them. But as you come around the right towards the end of the room, make sure you look for the blood banana, the dinner plate fig. On your left, you'll see peace lily. We also have stephanotis on the right, which is a wonderful flower for wedding bouquets. 
And then we come over here to the very far corner and we're going to look at cassava. With the cassava, most people don't realize that cassava is the plant that gives us tapioca. And tapioca is those little pearls that you make into a different kind of pudding. Also there's the cassava root or yucca. And this is a plant that's eaten in many parts of the world where they don't have potatoes. Also behind me I have the macadamia nut. And the macadamia nut is a plant most of us are familiar with, but did you realize that it's actually from Australia? Most people realize that it grows in Hawaii, but it's actually not from Hawaii. There are so many plants we didn't get to cover today, but I want to make sure there's one that you see before we leave the room. It's jackfruit. Jackfruit is a very small plant in our conservatory, but it has one of the largest fruits in the world. The fruit itself can grow up to 78 pounds. Here's a section of the fruit. It's an edible, and it's something that many cultures in the world love to eat. If you look up in the tree, you're going to see very small fruit starting to form. They're very tiny, only a couple inches long. They'll never reach the same size as a mature jackfruit. Thanks for taking the tour today. We hope you enjoyed it. Come back and visit us real soon.